So it's a pleasure to present uh, this paper uh, um, in front of you. Uh, as you can see, the title is very explicit, but I will express it much more in the paper. Uh, so um, this paper is a joint paper with Xavier Kolschniki from the University of Lille. And uh, this paper tries to deal with uh, which policy uh, OECD government particularly um, try to um, uh, use to uh, reduce or to address the shortage uh, in, in, uh, in the medical uh, sector. So um, why I use this title, the peak cycle in the labor supply of doctors, how training and immigration policy respond to short physician shortage. Uh, the starting point of this paper begins from uh, this graph, which is a graph about uh, the market on the peak and peak market in the US in the 30s. So what you can see uh, uh, here, you have the price on the peak market from 1901 until 1970. Uh, 30, uh, 35 uh, in, uh, in, in the US, and this is a price, so it goes up and it goes up and goes down. And this is a production of pig on the market uh, during the 30s, um, during this period, sorry. Uh, as, as you can see, when you have a peak or when you have a, 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 a drop uh, in, in the price, uh, the production or the quantity of uh, pig on the market adjusts, but it adjusts, as you can see with this, with, uh, with a delay. And in the, in, the, in the paper, the original paper from Ezekiel, he said that between the moment when you have a big increase uh, on uh, the price uh, of pig and the moment when the quantity or the production adjusts, it takes approximately a year. So um, this idea, uh, we try uh, to apply it to the case of medical doctors. And I, I will explain it how. So what you can see here uh, in the OECD countries is uh, there's a lot of uh, reports said that uh, uh, we uh, need much more doctors uh, in OECD because you, have, you are facing a lot of uh, uh, shortage uh, of physicians, particularly in remote areas. Uh, uh, as you can see in the US, uh, it seems that you have 200,000 uh, deficit of physicians uh, in the coming years, in the UK as well, in France. So you have uh, uh, quite consensus on this on this uh, on this topic, uh, but when you have this medical shortage in your countries, uh, OECD uh, the, the government try to uh, uh, apply some different policy uh, to address that. The first one, uh, as um, as is usually uh, uh, advocated in the report, is that we increase the numbers of uh, place in medical school because people uh, can uh, train, and we can train much more doctors in our country, and then they can deal with, uh, with the shortage. Uh, so that's, that's the first option that the uh, OECD advocated uh, in general, OECD countries advocated in general. The second uh, policy uh, that uh, uh, this government uh, advocated is either we can recruit doctors from abroad, and when they arrive in your country, they can address immediately uh, the shortage uh, in your country. So that's uh, that's how the immigration part arrived in this paper. Um, the second or the third uh, policy, people say, okay, uh, uh, in particularly in the case of the UK, you have a lot of native doctors, British doctors particularly, who goes out or who go to the US, for example. Uh, so um, uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, in the UK, for example, they say, we need to retain these people in our country. So we increase um, uh, the wages of these doctors, or uh, we, uh, in, um, we, we try to uh, uh, give them a much more better uh, health condition, working condition, and so on. So that's, uh, that's uh, the third policy, and the third policy try to deal with the immigration, not the immigration uh, in, in the country. And you have two other policy, uh, I'm not sure that I have time to, to explain that, but uh, these two policy is either to increase the productivity of doctors, meaning that um, when you have a shortage of, in your, uh, of physician in your country, uh, doctors need to only uh, devote their time to operation, surgery, and so on. So we need to give them uh, much more time to, uh, to really focus on operation and not other administrative tasks. So that's another thing. And another policy that people try uh, every time to uh, change is the distribution in, in within the country, not uh, between, uh, within the country being 
um, um, between the urban and the rural area because it's you know it's much more the rural area who is uh, much more uh, affected by uh, the medical shortage. But this policy is very difficult to uh, to to put in force because uh, when you have that, some uh, doctors uh, you have. Uh, maybe a, another di more distribution of doctors in the countries. It could be resolved in the short term, but in the long term, it remains exactly the same. So that's. But these two, um, these two policy we did not focus on in this paper because it's very difficult to get data on that. So let's focus much more on the three options. The question is when we uh, deal with the first policy that I said, okay, we have a medical shortage in our country, so we increase the number of medical doctors or medical students in medical school. Uh, the problem is that uh, you have a problem of timeliness, uh, meaning that uh, if you go for this policy, you need to wait approximately seven, ten years uh, for, because the duration of training uh, for these doctors is quite long. So it means that they can address the shortage only in the wrong run. So that's, uh, that's the first policy. Uh, the second policy is that either we recruit people from abroad, and uh, if we recruit people from abroad, we recruit people who are already trained. So it means that we don't need to wait for uh, the, 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 um, the, the duration of training, and they can uh, immediately address the shortage uh, of physicians in your country. And that's what happened uh, uh, for the moment in, in many OECD countries. And the last one is that, okay, if you have a medical shortages in your countries, it means that uh, a lot of uh, uh, the burden of uh, all the medical, uh, this medical shortage uh, is on uh, uh, the people who stay in the country. So it means that across time, uh, the de there's a deterioration of their working condition because there's, a, uh, there's a less and less doctors in your country. So this immigration of physicians as well increase the shortage uh, in, in the short term because these people can't stay in the country with a very difficult uh, working condition and you can uh, see uh, some people who immigrate. And this is a bit what's happened in some countries. I'll, I'll give uh, a talk on that. So that's approximately uh, the paper that we will uh, deal, uh, that we will deal uh, with today. So we uh, just try to explain which policy the government, OECD government, try to uh, to uh, put in force when we have a big uh, uh, when we have a big medical uh, shortages and how long or when this policy is really effective. So this is exactly what I said. So the data. Um, of course, as you understand, uh, if we have these three policy, we need the three uh, kind of data. The first uh, uh, data set that we need is the numbers of medical graduate or the number of medical uh, student in medical school. Medical student in medical school, we don't have it. So we have only the numbers who are graduated at the end of the, of the training. So, and this data is coming from uh, the health OECD data. The second... Uh, yeah, and what we use here, we use the number of medical work rate over uh, a thousand uh, physicians. What we have, uh, what we need as well is because we need uh, to know how many doctors enter in the country and we need to know how many doctors uh, emigrated outside these countries. So it means we have, uh, uh, we collect uh, previously, I collect previously the data uh, for a period from 1991 until 2004 and we use that. The, the definition in here is very important. What we really need is that we need the numbers of doctors who are already trained in your country. So it means the, 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 the definition about the country, about the, 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 the country of training is very important in that case. Because you have several data sets about the, the numbers of foreign doctors uh, in some countries, but it's usually based on the census data, so it means that you have only the foreign born doctors, which is not exactly what we need in this paper. So, what, uh, so we use that, and uh, what, how, we, how we deal with this data, we collect uh, data for, uh, for, from the medical association of this country, and we ask them uh, from the register how many doctors from abroad uh, is a register in your country uh, and practice in your country as well. So we know how many doctors uh, arrive, we know how many doctors, where do they come from, and how many are there. Okay? And we use uh, as uh, uh, traditionally the immigration rate and the, uh, uh, the immigration rate and the immigration rate as, as our variable that is interesting here. 
the last and maybe the, the, the most difficult uh, part uh, to get is how to uh, measure the shortage of physicians in our cases. So there's a, there's a big literature on that uh, and there's no consensus at all on this, on this measure. Some people say, okay, we need to focus on much more on the needs. So it means we try to estimate the numbers of sick people in your population and based on this estimation, you can calculate the numbers of doctors that you, that you need in a country. Uh, or you can have a, a services uh, target, which is we need to address, I don't know, 80% of uh, sick people in emergency in your country. So based on that, you say we need how many doctors in your country. And you have the last measure, which is a demand side. And uh, this is uh, the, and the, 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 I would say the, the indicator that we will use, and I will give you much more uh, uh, explanation on that on the next slide. You have different uh, uh, measures as well, uh, based on the country level, um, based on the regional level, or based on the city level. In our cases, we are on the macroeconomic level, so we use the country level, uh, and the measure, uh, which is uh, quite easy to find, is the numbers, or, or is the ratio uh, of uh, doctors uh, divided by the population. This is what usually people uh, use in the report, like World Health Organization report, for example. The problem is that if we use uh, this measure in a World Health Organization report, uh, the threshold to have a, a shortage of physicians in your countries is around 2.53 per thousand uh, people uh, in your country. The problem is that we are in OECD countries, and in OECD countries, the threshold is always over than three. So it means that if I just consider the level of this measure, uh, I did not have at all any shortage of, me, of a physician in my country. So I need to find a way to uh, uh, calculate the shortage of physician in my country uh, uh, via this measure, uh, without, but without using the level of this measure. So what we um, did here is that, okay, we say, okay, we have the ratio of doctors in my countries, and this ratio is a supply of doctors that we have, but I need to confront the, uh, the surplus of these uh, doctors with the demand of uh, doctors in my countries. And what we uh, use, I use a paper by Scheffler 2008 here, which said that the best way to estimate the demand for health, uh, health of the demand for a physician, for example, or uh, yeah, the demand of physician, the best way to do is to uh, use uh, uh, the predictor, which is uh, the prediction of the GDP per capita. So I use the GDP per capita, based on this GDP per capita of your country, I predict the demand of doctors that you have, and based on that, I can confront this measure to the real measure of doctors that you have in your country. And what we, this is exactly what we did here. This is uh, uh, the prediction, and this is the density that you have. So here, the prediction is much more important than the density, and here you have, a, you have a, a shortage of physician in your country. In that period, from 1993 until, 2000, uh, until 1996, you, know, you have a surplus of doctors, and then you have another shortage, another surplus, and so on. Okay? Just to give you an idea, and I picked one country uh, here, uh, which is uh, um, quite illustrative of this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, study, uh, so I pick uh, the, the case of France here. In the red, what we have, you have the shortage that I calculated, so the, the prediction uh, minus uh, the, the, the real measure of doctors. And here I have the, 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 the medical graduate, so the numbers of uh, students who are graduated from medical school after seven years or 10 years, okay? And what we can see is that you have uh, a very big correlation between these two, and uh, the pattern is almost the same. So it means that when you have a decrease in the shortage, you have also a decrease in the numbers of, or in numbers of medical graduate or number of new doctors that arrive in your country. Uh, uh, so it means, uh, and after when you have the increase in the, in the shortage, you have another increase after, I would say, between 1997 and 1996, uh, you have a delay of uh, approximately nine years. So it's, it remember the first graph that I show you, the big cycle one. 
which means that when you have yeah when you have uh, a decrease in your shortage or an increase in your shortage, uh, you have a delay between the moment when the production of doctors adjusts. And here, in that case, it corresponds approximately to the, no, to the time or the duration of training in your country. And what we, uh, I should just show you the immigration rates, and you can see that when you have a big uh, decrease in the shortage, uh, when you have a big increase, much more in the shortages here, you have immediately uh, an increase in the immigration rate uh, uh, after that. And uh, for the immigration rate, it's all also very correlated in that case. So I just, uh, so you understand what I, uh, what I um, just try to estimate in that case is, I try to estimate the number of students uh, or the number of graduated uh, uh, in my countries, the number of uh, immigrants and emigrants, uh, 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 <coughs> With, uh, with this uh, base of the shortage of medical, uh, um, that I, medical shortage that I have in my country. I, use, I have a panel uh, fixed effect analysis and we try to deal with uh, the problem of reverse causality or omitted variable by some IV, uh, um, IV instrument which is a ge geographical density and the aging of physician uh, in, in, this, uh, in this case. What I have here is that First, I estimate these three equations separately, but then we see and we say that probably all these uh, things is uh, correlated uh, themselves because when you have a medical shortage, you increase probably the number of places in medical school, but you also uh, attract much more physicians and you try to retain your practicing doctors in your country. So both are simultaneous, simultaneously correlated, so that's why I use this three SLS model as well to tackle this issue. And just to show you uh, the, the results, uh, so as you can see here, this is only for the, uh, for the graduate. Uh, the graduate after uh, one year or 10 years after the shortage, and here is after five, six, seven, and uh, eight. Uh, eight and, and eight and nine, and you can see just after the medical gra medical shortage, you don't have any effect. But after five, six, seven, uh, much more in, uh, in uh, at the long run, you have this effect of uh, the numbers of uh, so you have this increase of the number of students in your country. I just show you uh, the same result for the immigration and immigration. This is immigra immigration, the numbers of doctors who enter, and this is the number of doctors who immigrate. So it goes out from your country, and you can see the effect is very important uh, immediately or, the, or the, 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 the period just after, and then it disappears. So you recruit much more physician immediately when you receive, when you have a medical shortage. However, uh, during all the period when you have a, a medical shortage in your country, a lot of your doctors emigrate, so it goes it goes out because uh, the burden of the, of the or the deterioration of the working condition. So that's uh, exactly the same result, the simultaneity uh, bias, the robustness check. Uh, and if I just summarize uh, uh, what I find here, so uh, um, we, we come back to the first graph that I uh, show you. In terms of elasticity, if you have a 10% increase in the medical uh, uh, shortage in your country, you have approximately an increase of 4% of the numbers of medical graduates uh, seven years, 10 years after, I would say. Uh, and uh, for, the, for the immigration rate, you have a big increase the, the year after or the, the year when you have your medical uh, uh, shortages, about 1%. Uh, and uh, all the period when you have your medical shortage in, in your country, you have an immigration of your practicing doctors uh, outside your country because of the deterioration of the working condition. And I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you.